Okay. The next pillar of a healthy relationship with self, which is the second week of the Secure Self challenge that I'm going to be running, is around self-care. Now, I know that when a lot of you hear self-care, you might have a bit of an eye roll around, you know, I think that self-care has been so commoditized in the past decade, probably, uh, and it feels like the domain of, you know, glossy magazines and highly produced Instagram content of, you know, having a towel wrapped around your head and like a lovely face mask and a bubble bath and all of, all of the things. Um, but you know, and while I'm, I'm all for a, a lovely bubble bath, it's not really what I'm talking about here. What I'm really talking about is how attuned and responsive are you to the rhythms and the needs and the capacity of your body and your being? That sounds a little bit esoteric. Let me expand. I think that you know, once upon a time when I was living a very different life to how I live now, uh, I pretty much just pushed through all the time. So if I was tired, I would have more coffee. If I had a headache, I would take, you know, painkillers and keep pushing. If I had a cold, I would, again, like just take something to dull the symptoms so that I could plow on with whatever I was doing because all of those things in my body were inconvenient um, and were getting in the way of my agenda, which was just to do what I had to do. When I look back on that now, I can see how disconnected I was from my body uh, and the needs of my body and the rhythms of my body and how detrimental that was ultimately, um, because it also meant that I was disconnected from the emotions of my body and, you know, to what I was just talking about around self-compassion, when we treat all of those signals and, and feedback that we're getting from our body as kind of inconvenient <laughs> and getting in the way of what we would prefer or desire or, or what we want to do, and we just try and make it all go away, stuff it down, <laughs> uh, that tends not to work and it tends to really come back to bite us with with a vengeance. So when I'm talking about self-care here, it's really, you know, can I become more attuned to myself? I think even the fact that this might sound kind of woo-woo and esoteric to many of you speaks to how deeply disconnected we are collectively from our bodies <laughs> and from our, you know, that, that we all kind of walk around on autopilot in this mode of busyness and to-do lists and hustle and, you know, how that really reliably leads us to feel burnt out and not only disconnected from ourselves, but disconnected from other people, chronically tired, chronically sick. And I think that it's really hard to have a positive relationship with yourself when you are living like that, because you are fundamentally it's kind of like your head is cut off from your body uh, and understanding the role of the body in our emotional experience is so fundamental to my, not only my work, but the way that I live my life. And it's been a huge shift that I've made in the past five years or so and has had a really profound impact on my well-being and the way that I now live my life. Uh, so I think that the more that we can consciously train ourselves to check in on what do I need? How am I feeling? What is my capacity? How can I resource myself today to feel more grounded, more present, more energized? Uh, you know, do I need to take things slower or do I have more energy? Do I need to move my body? Uh, all of these things that when we, as I said, train ourselves to attune to that and turn towards that and check in with ourselves regularly, then that really feeds into this broader relationship of self-awareness. Uh, and we then kind of indirectly build more self-trust because we know that we're a really good caretaker of ourselves. Whereas when we ignore all of that and we just plow through and we bulldoze and we push on and we hustle, then we don't have much of a relationship of self-trust because we don't, we know that like we're not very responsible carers, right? Uh, in the same way as if you were responsible for caring for someone else and you consistently ignored the signals and needs 
that they had and it was making them you know, chronically sick, tired and burnt out, then they probably wouldn't rely on you as someone who was going to be responsive and attuned to them in a way that cultivated trust and safety. So recognizing that you have that same responsibility to yourself to build up that relationship uh, and that it reaps so many rewards beyond just feeling better. You know, it's not just about having a picture perfect kind of self-care routine. That's again, not what I'm talking about. Uh, It's just this moment to moment practice of pausing and tuning in and going, how am I feeling? What do I need? Uh, You know, practically speaking, and again, this might sound kind of weird or or self-indulgent to you if this is not where you're coming from or not where you're at. Um, But many, many times throughout the day, every single day, I will pause and I'll check in with how I'm going. And it's not some big elaborate thing. It's just habit by this point. But I'll then seek to most optimize my environment um, and my surroundings and, you know, kind of optimize the moment. So I might go, ah, what do I need? I'm feeling a little bit restless. Do I need to walk outside for a few minutes or do I need to eat something? What do I feel like eating? Do I need to drink something? What do I feel like drinking? Uh, And actually pausing and inquiring and responding to specifically what I am feeling and needing in that moment and offering that to myself rather than again, just plowing through on autopilot um, and doing things because I don't have time to think about it and I don't have the luxury of space like all of that stuff I think that the more we tell ourselves that story of you know I can't and I don't have time and you know all of that is really just taking us further away from ourselves when the goal is to bring us closer into alignment and wholeness So self-care as a practice of turning towards ourselves and becoming more present to what is here today uh, and how we can bring more nourishment and groundedness to that uh, is a really, really valuable practice in nurturing your overall relationship with yourself. 